Well, here we are in the here and now. Yeah. Four days in prison, Bordeaux. But what was worse was uh, the first night, you know, in the police holding station. There are sadists, you know, in the full sense of the word. You know, it was very inhumane. Incredible. The police are nuts. You know, there's a new policy. They're supposed to have a university diploma. But right now they have nothing, nothing inside there to work with. No mental tools at all. Really impervious to any sort of humane sort of a dialogue or anything like that. These cops are nuts. Really, I'm warning you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm warning you all. <laughs> well, but you know, like the first night was uh, <clears throat> in this holding station with four uh, incandescent lamps, you know, going at the same time all night long. And there was no mattress on the bench. And uh, there was no food. And there was no cover. And there was no pillow either, you know. <laughs> and uh, they would just sort of walk around, you know, every 30 minutes or so to make sure that you hadn't killed yourself. And, uh, <laughs> and that was about it, you know, for the first night. But in Bordeaux, that was like summer camp uh, afterwards. This old prison of 150 years. <laughs> It's a really bizarre inside. They still have the old bull, bullhorn, you know, loudspeakers <laughs> that are about, you know, maybe 150 years old as well. And, uh, you know, like the, the guards, you know, shout into them. <laughs> and, you know, when I was just arrived, you know, I'm not used to hearing that sort of thing, you know, and, uh, uh, and I didn't, you know, I couldn't understand whatever was being said over the loudspeaker, even though it was supposed to be something like very urgent, you know, that you had to do it was like an order. I had no idea what it was, you know, like, and then, you know, at the last, uh, you know, this, the last day I was visiting with a, a friend there and uh, Jesse Wasman. And, uh, you know, he, he says, you know, wasn't that uh, you that they called, you know, to go out, you know, because I was just about to go out. And, he, and I said, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so I missed my call out. And he said, here, come with me. You know, let's go ask. <laughs> so the two of us, you know, two uh, Jewish uh, Jewish criminals are you know, walking down the hallway, a very long hallway, you know, like, and he's down at cell 31, you know, and <laughs> so we get there. Yeah, that's me, you know, that they wanted to, you know, to get out, you know, so <laughs> that was about it. That was after we had smoked up, of course, you know, like, you know, it's all over the place, you know, like, you know, it's everything's, you know, the prison walls are coming down, not only legally, you know, but in terms of, you know, technology, you know, and, uh, digital access to the internet. I mean, you know, in the first ward that I was in, uh, a ward, you know, there's even you know uh, um, uh, news being made, you know, by it that they have succeeded in using drones to fly in, you know, phones, drones for phones, you know, like <laughs> and then getting away with it. You know, when I came back there that night, you know, like was under search, you know, so we had to all hang out in the gym, you know, for like three hours. So you know, I did some exercises. That's all. You meet the most so, interesting people there, you know. And Chris, uh, you know, from the Mohawk Nation, wow. You know, like everyone's there. And like about 30% of the inmates, you know, are, are of uh, colored men. And uh, a third are black men, even though the population is much less. It's all sort of skewed. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. It, usually, it usually is. Um so can you explain just what happened after court, how, how you wound up in, in, in the facility, yeah. and, how, and, how, and how did you get out? Uh, I broke out. <laughs> no, no. Well, yes, but, you know, what happened is that, uh, you know, when I first got arrested, I had to sign this paper saying that I wouldn't go back to the Jewish Community Center, where the poster right. was hanging out in front of you know, when I did the uh, graffiti, which is, you know, a, f a fact, you know, I don't deny that. It's just that I deny the charge, you know, on the fact, which is the problem. So, you know, the guys inside, you know, were freaking out that I'd be in there for graffiti. And I said, what? You know, graffiti at 75 years of age. Okay. So, you know, anything is possible in the world of, you know, what is kind of world is it? It's a whole sort of layer, you know, like a plaster on top of our society that is a, uh, keeping us confined, you know, like we're living in a prison. That's what it's all yeah. about. 
So, um, you know, when I got out of the first, you know, like a, uh, detention, you know, to receive the charge, you know, way back, uh, I had to sign this condition saying I wouldn't go back to the Jewish Community Center, but I figured I could contest it, you know, in the first appearance. <clears throat> but then I found out that, you know, you can't contest it on the first appearance, you know, on what's called the comparison. So, you know, I put a, a, uh, a and so the, um, the legal motion that I put together, written down in form, to deposit it that day now, that day, I gave it to this guy who was supposed to be a lawyer who said he was going to be helping me, and he didn't deposit it, you know, but I don't think it would have worked anyway the first day, you know, because that's what the um, regulation 505 of the criminal code says. Okay, so then I come, uh, I negotiate with the, uh, I ask the uh, Crown prosecutor, you know, if they would lift the um, that uh, condition, you know, of release, and they refused. So I figured, okay, I have to deposit this on my own. So I went and I move. I put the the the, uh, the motion into the court at the clerk's desk, and I got a hearing set for uh, Tuesday morning, the day at which I was going to go back to the Jewish Community Center for the general annual meeting of the Holocaust Museum that I want to be a member of, you know, because I'm a second generation Holocaust survivor, you know, so what's a Jewish, you know, uh, a museum on the Holocaust, you know, all about if there's, you know, <laughs> the survivors are not allowed to be in there, you know, it wouldn't make any sense. So, so, you know, as the hearing was in the morning, and the Crown Prosecutor, you know, like was saying that, you know, she was maintaining, you know, her objection to, uh, to lifting this release and that I would still be banned, you know, and if I went back, I would be arrested, you know. So the judge said, well, you know, like, uh, I've been instructed by the Crown Prosecutor, you know, that that I don't have a decision in the matter. And I said, you know, that's not possible because I received an email from the Crown Prosecutor saying that she refused to lift the condition. That is that she had a choice in the matter and she could have lifted it if she wanted to, but she didn't. So that means a judge could also have, you know, a power of decision to decide whether or not to lift the condition, yes or no. But this judge, you know, denied that she had such a power. And she, she refused to lift the condition. She was just giving an excuse because she was told not to, you know, by the Crown Prosecutor, who was told not to, you know, by the Zionist lobby type thing. So I was refused that the Tuesday morning, you know, which I thought I was going to win. So uh, I went back to the Jewish Community Center anyway. And, you know, I gave them a copy of the motion that I then deposited that afternoon with the Superior Court in appeal against the decision of the Municipal Court judge. So... You know, I figured, you know, like if I showed them this, you know, they'd be afraid, you know, to have me arrested because they might be wrong. But they were so confident, you know, and they were sure, you know, that I had to be gotten rid of, you know, like it was incredible, you know, the mentality that I was presented with. So, you know, when I went there, you know, I walk into the foyer, you know, there's security and, you know, you have to go with side entrance, you know, there's four security guards there in the sky, you know, like, you know, a taller than me, you know, like a bit chubby, you know, like sort of, you know, young enough, you know, to sort of physically push me back, comes up to me and says, who are you? And I said, I'm Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. And he says, you know, you're not allowed to be here. Da, da, da. And he said, no, here, look at this, you know, motion that I've just presented. He accepted it, looked at it and said, no, 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 no. And he says, uh, if you don't leave, I'm going to call the police, you know. So I said, no, I, I, I can't leave. And so meanwhile, I had a body cam on, you know, I took my phone and I put it in my front pouch and I had it on live, you know, on Facebook. <laughs> and so I created a body cam with my phone. So that's the first video that got out, you know, showing the cops coming up to me. But it doesn't show them, you know, handcuffing me in the back or anything like that. But that was captured on video by uh, Robin Edgar on his uh, YouTube station. And uh, uh, it was, you know, put into the comment section of the first uh, notification that uh, I put up on, uh, on the way going into the Jewish Community Center that's on my Facebook page. So then, you know, they they put the handcuffs on like tight, you know, like they were hurting. You know, I got the inflammation over here. I showed this to uh, to another judge afterwards. Boy, there's so much that happened, you know, like it's time compressed into this, this immense, you know, black hole that's, you know, unending. So um, they took me into this police holding station where, you know, like it was the all night, you know, torture. And I was, you know, getting pretty tired out. So I finally got to Bordeaux, you know, got some rest. Then I started meeting people. Wow, what a world, you know, the lump and proletariat, a whole other, you know, like universe. Incredible. And everybody gets to meet everybody else. 
you know, all the different nationalities, all the different backgrounds. You know, this, you know, guy from the Mohawk Nation, you know, from New York, you know, he was there. He didn't speak any French. And, you know, and I was put in cell with him, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I, I sort of, you know, like learned, you know, all about, you know, like how the cell, you know, the, the whole wing was operating. It was incredible, you know, like whole underground existence there, you know, to, to defy the imprisonment, you know, as I mentioned in terms of technology and, 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 uh, so, uh, then, uh, you know, one of the people that I was in contact with, you know, like a movement person, you know, who's a punk sinker act, actually, um, he's, he also happened to, happens to be a lawyer, <laughs> a movement lawyer who's punk, you know, and autistic as well, you know, but he controls it, you know, he's an immense, you know, determination. And in court, you know, he'd done all this research, you know, and, and uh, he came in, you know, to help me, you know, uh, uh, pass the motion, you know, through. And so the first judge, he, he found, you know, he, he told the judge, he educated the judge and, and, and demonstrated to her, you know, according to the regulation 505, the criminal code, you know, that she did have discretionary power. So she had uh, declared, you know, that uh, she was misled by the Crown prosecutor. So then we had another hearing on Thursday morning that he got with a new judge, and it was declared, you know, and the previous judge had declared it, you know, and also he declared in court, you know, that she had made an error. And so this new judge said that she adopts, you know, the responsibility of making a discretionary decision on the on the condition, and she called for a hearing. And uh, we had the hearing Thursday morning, and then, you know, the, the, the lawyer didn't show up until the afternoon, and she was getting pissed off because she was working since nine o'clock in the morning, you know, and so... <laughs> So, you know, we're waiting. So finally he shows up, you know, and he's got it all prepared, you know, and he's got all this research that he did, you know, like five different cases, you know, of why I should be released. And, you know, it was so convincing. It was incredible. And then I was testifying as to my background, you know, prove that I was Jewish and that, you know, so she came down, you know, the next day she didn't release me right away. She had me come back, you know, on video the next morning. And then she had this whole written decision that she read that's setting a precedent Establishing that this is an internal, uh, you know, like a uh, difference of a uh, political nature within the Jewish community, and it has you know no reason, you know, to keep uh, me uh, confined, you know, even before I'm considered to be guilty or whether or not I'm considered to be gu guilty. So this, uh, you know, like is is not you know justifiable, and she released me, like that. And then it took you know like a few more hours you know and then finally got out and then got all my stuff back except for my marijuana the co you know the guards kept that <laughs> so why ridiculous they, why they keep your marijuana well, I had the marijuana with me you know like in my pouch oh, no, my backpack but why did they keep it mar mar marijuana legal in, in, in um yeah, yeah, it is. You know, they probably kept it to smoke because <laughs> I had good marijuana. You know, like from the government store, you know, Jean Guy, it's called. <laughs> it's famous. <laughs> so you're telling me you can smoke marijuana inside the prison? No, no, they kept it in, in stock, you know, like together with all my clothes and stuff. Hmm. Yeah. So, but, uh, but inside, of course, you know, we smoke for sure. We got it in, you know, one way or another. No problem. <laughs> it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. So, so you know, they, they were so, defeated, you know, the Zionists were defeated, you know, and it's just the written decision, you know, I'm going to get it on a, on an audio disc, and I'll be able to reproduce it and then translate it. It's, you know, it's a magnificent precedent. And, uh, you know, the, my lawyer developed another argument, you know, saying, <clears throat> you know, that the poster that I was writing on was itself illegal because it was posting on, you know, public property on a lamppost, and that's not permitted by city regulation. Luck. You know, that's, you know, their case is gone. They've lost already, you know. When it actually comes to trial on the 30th of October, you know, they're going to be in uh, full retreat. This is, so, uh, you, know, you know, it's logical that it would have, you know, come to this, to this point, you know, but it doesn't, you know, the whole thing, you know, doesn't operate, you know, the state doesn't operate according to logic. So if you use logic, you can, you can defeat the state. So explain again what, what was your victory? Explain again. What was the victory over? Okay, first of all, uh, I can't be banned from the Jewish Community Center just because okay. I'm a, a Jewish Bundist. You know, the Zionists have control of the Jewish Community Center, but they can't ban the Jewish Bund. You know, they can't ban a Jewish Bundist because the Jewish Bundist is Jewish and it's supposed to be a Jewish Community Center. 
you know, it's supposed to be operating on the on, on the behalf of all, the entire Jewish community, and it belongs to the whole Jewish community. And if they deny that, then all of a sudden you have a selection process. Who decides, you know, who's going to be Jewish, you know? And all of a sudden, boom, you know, you have a nuclear explosion of a difference of opinion as to who is Jewish or not, you know? You know, that's impossible. It would, you know, implode. So okay. there and I've got a legal definition now that I am Jewish and that I belong in the Jewish Community Center. This is, you know, like, it's cracked yeah. open the whole, you know, like... Okay, so that means that they cannot ban you, is that right? Is that correct? I can go back anytime there, yeah. Yeah, I'm in no rush, though. <laughs> no, well, okay, but but you have you have this you have this in writing, correct? Yeah, oh, yeah, on audio. It's not in writing yet. I don't know if the judge is going to give, you know, a written copy to my lawyer. You know, uh, Maître uh, Richard, Richard uh, uh, Boyer. Good guy. Movement lawyer. And uh, okay. so uh, okay. now, uh, now so, it's a question well, of whether the, yeah, okay, there's other stuff out of words. You know, that's for a little much later. Yeah. So what's next? You have a trial on, in October? Yeah, October 30th is next appearance. I think that's the set a date for trial. And then we can select the witnesses. I've got all the proof that they have, you know, already. And uh, the next step is uh, getting a, a witness selection and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be able to uh, pull in the original, you know, uh, librarian who made the complaint against me. And I can uh, ask her any question and she has to answer it under oath. Okay, and what are you going to and what what are you going to trial for again? Criminal mischief. Wow. They're saying that the writing of the graffiti on the Israel Day wow. the poster was a criminal mischief because I was uh, vandalizing property of another. Okay, this property were, is worth two dollars and one cent, and it belongs to uh, some private, uh, uh, you know, a political organization that is promoting Z Zionism. There, it's not. Uh, I don't think it's the Jewish Community Center that's sponsoring this. No, this is a, you know, it has its own uh, name. It was written in the proof somewhere, you know, that the poster belonged to some committee or other. So, it, you know, and then they were claiming that I was, you know, writing on the building itself, <laughs> you know, like as if, you know, I was writing on the private property, but it wasn't. It was on a posted on a lamppost, you know, which is an, itself an illegal thing to do. But uh, anyway. You know, like it's okay. going to be in court. It's going to be a big, big thing. It's going to be, you know, like, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's it's like putting them on trial now. So you were unable to get that prosecution stopped or dropped? Yeah, it's not dropped yet. I'm going to put forward a motion. That's one of the first things I'm going to do. I have it all written yeah. up already, you know, like okay. a motion to... Uh, to cancel the whole proceeding, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, 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 that, that's because I'm, I'm just saying. But I'd like it to go but, ahead. <laughs> you know, but for the, but, but for the court, for the court, for the court to waste its money uh, and it, and its time over you writing seven words on a piece of paper, hmm. which shouldn't have been on a poll anyway. <laughs> because it's a not it's a public poll mm. so it is a, it is an illegal posting mm. therefore why should you be prosecuted for writing on something that should not even have even been there yeah of minimal value you know i haven't sort of destroyed some artistic uh, no yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Object yeah. or I mean, something like that so we're not, we're not yeah, yeah we're not talking about anything of substance here yeah. So a, post, a poster illegally posted on public property that you wrote on. Yeah. And the court is now wasting the spending the people of Canada's money mm. about to prosecute you. Yeah. And that proves it sounds like a, it's it sounds like a political prosecution. That proves that, that it's a political that, prosecution. That, yeah. That's I'm, I'm gonna say yeah. it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Let me give you let me give you an analogous situation. In many urban areas, Latin, meaning Mexican or South American or Central American entertainers, advertise illegally. They put their posters all over town, on city posts, on freeway entrances, 
everywhere in the uh, in, in in the country. They don't buy a billboard. <laughs> they never advertise. They never pay to advertise ever. <laughs> never anywhere. <laughs> okay, all their postings are illegal, <laughs> and, and and they never take them down. <laughs> okay, so that's like me going to one of their posters and saying, "What happened in I I O Z Napa or some determination for Puerto Rico or stop the stop the sanctions against Venezuela?" It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. The posters are there illegally. They're not legally put them up between between one o'clock and four o'clock in the morning. There's no cops on the streets. Yeah. They're, they're, so it's the same thing. Oh, we're going to charge you with defacing this poster. Yeah, but but it's up there illegally. <laughs> it's, exactly, it's exactly the same thing that's happened to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, it is a completely parallel, analogous situation. Yeah. There should be no, the, 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 it should be, it should never have been, this should never have been brought even to a prosecution. Yeah, yeah. They should drop the second they got the complaint. No, we're dropping this. We're not going to waste time. On this. this is a political. This is a political prosecution. Yeah, and but they're pretending that it's an anti-Semitic act because it's uh, done against the Jewish Community Center, but it's not against the Jewish Community Center. It's not. It's, it's not, not on the property at all. You know, like I just no. came out of the property. You know, no. Yeah. No, and I, I, what they're saying, what they're, what they're saying is the advocate for Palestine is anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah, that's what she said in her affidavit, you know, when she wrote down. And she didn't use the full, you know, like, length of the words that I had actually written. <clears throat> she just wrote down that I had written Free Palestine on the poster, when in fact I had that's fine. and a Free that's Palestine. Fine. So, you know, like she was saying it's anti-Israel, but how could it be anti-Israel if the world, the word and is there? Because Israel must be there before the word and. You know, it's only logical, you know, so I'm going to ask her about that. <laughs> so, you know, like... But, you know, at the same time, you know, there's four books of mine inside the library, inside, you know, there, I can't even go to see my own books, you know, like on previous, you know, like a juris, uh, in juridical decision, but now I'm free. Oh, yeah, here's my, my freedom uh, t-shirt. <laughs> this is from a conference in 2001, yeah. we had Chicago, yeah. you know, there you uh, go. and the occupation, this was, uh, you know, there are Jewish uh, uh, you know, uh, United Front uh, movement conference that we had uh, that launched the campaign, you know, to in North America to start, you know, organizing against the, the Zionist Party's control of the Jewish uh, communities. Yeah, okay. I guess right. More than a control. Yeah. Well, that's a very, that's a very, that's a very, a very, a very beautiful and profound t shirt you have there. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this was a big step forward, you know, for us because we were so isolated before. And then, uh, you know, um, um, you know, uh, this guy in Chicago, you know, he he got it together, you know, and he was pretty good. He brought us all together. And we had people from, you know, various tendencies, both, you know, two state and one state sort of, you know, propositions. And uh, we just, you know, I, I we helped organize a consensus, you know, uh, that accommodated both, you know, perspectives that that's not the important issue, the important, you know, a plane on which to, you know, uh, do a political combat, you know, is uh, resistance is on the occupation because that's the, the most severe repression of the Palestinians at this point. But, you know, like, it's sort of, you know, like a problem too, you know, because the Palestinian refugee camps get uh, get forgotten about, you know. Meanwhile, they enter into civil war between Fatah and, and Hamas and Islamic Jihad against Fatah. And then sometimes now what's happening is, you know, Fatah itself is split. And they're fighting, you know, the external command and the internal command of Fatah are two different things. And now they're fighting about it as well. There was even one day in which there were 10 casualties, 10 deaths between the Palestinians in that camp. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a struggle, you know, on so many different planes. And now I've added a plane of struggle in which we've had a victory here in the international arena. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think so, and um, what I'm hoping is that um, has ha have have you had any other allies like Jason on uh, um, the news talk about your case yet? Yeah, oh yeah, Jason's been good. You know, like he's hard hitting. You know, he's generally accurate, and, and uh, he puts it into perspective and into context. You know, he's he educates you know a lot of people that way. 
you know, that's excellent. And then a couple of other, you know, broadcasters as well. Uh, oh, my. Yeah, but, you know, we've only sort of, you know, been able to have, you know, carry on uh, YouTube media. Right. You know, we, ha we haven't been able to break into, you know, the Canadian Jewish News, you know, which declares itself to be Zionist, you know, in the first place, you know, she called itself the Canadian Zionist News. So, you know, all those avenues are still blocked. So it's, uh, you know, the Quebecois media, you know, perhaps could, you know, break it open because, you know, the Quebecois are generally sympathetic, you know, with the Palestinians because they have a parallel condition of being occup uh, being under occupation by a another, you know, national culture. Right. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. So, so we, so we, we have a, we have a hearing in October, 30. and you can, and you, and you preparing. So you have about a month and a month into a month, about six weeks to prepare for that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've got. Okay. Uh, I've got uh, all the proof is, is right here in this. Here it is. You know all the affidavits and stuff. So it was uh, important, you know, to be independent of a lawyer because the first liar, lawyer was uh, had, was shafting me. But, yes, you know, when, uh, it's, 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 I can work together with a movement problem. lawyer, you know, like um, Maître Richard Beaulieu. Wow. You know, like, uh, that's double trouble. You know, that's wonderful. It sure sounds like you were shafted. That's what you're to me, I tell you. Yeah. That's, that's the worst thing in the world when a lawyer rips your ass off. When a lawyer takes your money yeah. And doesn't do it. Oh, it's just, it's something about that. It's, it's, it, you know, it's like a business, you know, <laughs> it's like a business. They do the least work for the most money type thing. That's all that you're concerned well, about. Well, and really, they don't do no work, but run their, they basically research something, write yeah. it down, go to court and talk. That's what they do. Yeah. Right. And the research yeah. is, you know, like, it's not in the library with books or anything like that. It just, you know, puts, you know, a few code words, you know, into a lawyer's program and then they get the research back. That's it. That's all. And then just read it. That's all they do. That's all they do. You know, I really think for this experience, we need to, we need more out of jail house lawyers. We need more people out of, on the streets mm. who know who know the law. Yeah. Because it seems to me that's what happened with you. Yeah. Somebody knew the law, came in with some arguments. The judge had to, had to take him to account because they're filed as like, I know a, the, the law, I know a lawyer right now, and you know, bless her, she would never do that. Huh. Huh. She would yeah. always be, she, and she's a movement person. Yeah, it takes, but a, lot there are, it takes a lot of courage, but, you know, to do right, that, you know, right? But she's the lawyer, yeah, so she would never train us. She would, I mean, I'm gonna have to ask you, why don't you train people to be to be street lawyers? Mm. I mean, why not train some people? Yeah. Ultimately, it's gonna have to come back to you for the serious stuff that we don't know what we're doing. Mm. And maybe maybe you have the act because you, you have been you have passed the bar and you've been doing it for 25 years. Mm. You should know some you you would know a few things that we don't know. Mm. But on some things, you can tell us what to do. Yeah. File yeah. motion, file motion, you know, this, 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 just how 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 the system works. Yeah, that's right. Because once you can get a hearing, oh boy, yes, it opens it. Can I get out. a hearing? I mean, even, even if you even if you want to f with somebody over some legal issues, yeah, you get a hearing is important. Maybe you could do that, and then and then they'll tell you here, go down to the courthouse. You 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 get the hearing filed. And I'll be your lawyer when 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 you go to court, and I'll save you some money. Come on, some people need to know that we need to know at least a paralegal part of it. How do you file the document? Mm -hmm. you know, we should learn learn that in high school or something. Mm -hmm. And then so, you, know, uh, you know, people can also start on their own, you know, because they you just have to go up to the clerk in the court and ask for you know the form to do such and such, and the clerk will say. Oh, what do you mean, da da da? And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, oh yeah, this form here. You know, they give you the form, and then they, uh, you know, help you to fill it out. <laughs> you know, you can start like that. Depends on the on the clerk. You know, have to find you know, yourself right. a sympathetic clerk. You know, has nothing else to do, sort of thing. Nothing else to do. Yeah. To do. Okay, so we've got a few minutes left. Uh, so um, we should think of what to to conclude with here. Uh, what about you? Uh, what's uh, well, everybody should know 
and United States Biden may be gone soon. Well, your your mic, you know, your sound isn't coming through the. Uh, maybe you could bring your that? microphone closer to your mask or something like that. Can, can you hear me now? That's better. Yeah, now you're closer to the mic. Okay. Well, the image is gone anyway. Um, everybody should know that Biden may be gone soon. How? You mean yeah. the election is soon or what? No, he might not. Let... I've come across an, an, an analysis that's new to me. Uh -huh. And basically they're saying that the Hunter Biden prosecution, Biden's pitiful outcome on his Ukraine war, yeah. his apparent um, loss of mental skills. Oh, yeah. Not because not of age, just, just because he seems to be losing it. Because I'm against, oh, you're 85, you can't do it. No, 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 no. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, you don't. I don't buy that, 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 that nonsense. But... They, there may be an, an impeachment hearing on Biden. He would win in the Senate. He would still be, he might be impeached in the House. And there's pressure on him to get out. But it's not yet the mainstream political conversation in the U.S. But I'm convinced this analysis is correct, mm -hmm. that Biden may be forced out before he leaves off, before the end of the term, and or he will drop his, not his determination to become president. Again, just something you might want to be be aware of. This this may be it for him. Not next week. Not next month. No, but the but the wheels are in place now. That he may be forced out for a number of reasons. Forced out of reelection, or even forced out of the presidency. Mm. Yes, but it's not that much known. This is going to happen, but things are in play now. Mm -hmm. And it's a good chance one of the two will happen. He'll either leave the presidency and won't run, of course, or just not not run. Mm -hmm. Because the, the Hunter Biden investigation and, and the impeachment, his mental deterioration and the Ukraine war loss, it, it is a debacle, have tarnished his image. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats will be forced to dump him. Because right now, I must say the Republicans would win the election, uh -huh. but, but no one is too pleased. No one is too pleased with him. Uh -huh. but that's I, it for me. Who, who, can, who can they put up, you know, to replace him? Who do they have? Well, that's, that's Hillary a, Clinton. I don't, or what? <laughs> well, you know, that's a good question because Gavin Newsom of California, the government of California, I don't, I don't think he wants the position. He doesn't still stay in California. He just, you know, I mean. Uh -huh. He's governor. He got it made. Why? Why try to run for president and lose? But he still can lose. He still can lose the presidential race and still and still still still, still remain governor. So uh -huh. it's possible that Gavin Newsom would do it. I'm not sure, but he. I'm I'm saying this is out of the hands of the Democrats. What is happening now? The Republicans have started, and the prosecution of his son is adding to it. And the the loss of the loss of the war in, in, in Ukraine, it is lost. They cannot win the war. They couldn't win it. It was dumb to even start it. The loss of the war in Ukraine and also his apparent mental mental deterioration. Yeah. Then they complain the loss of the war on Biden and get rid of it. Yes, him. yes, yes, exactly. You got it. They can blame it on him. Yeah. And therefore he is gone. Yeah. He's gone, the new guy or new woman. Uh, clean, cleans up the mess. Yeah, that exactly. Biden started. That's exact. You got it. Yeah, that's it. It's inevitable. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that's <laughs> and then it. consider, you know, that the. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I'm so tired. It's okay. But the election is uh, is uh, next November or what? Yes, the election is a year away. <laughs> okay, so next November. But the Russian offensive is, is going to start the next springtime, so it's going to be just before the election. Right. So they got they got to get this. They got to either 
what they call free the conflict. You know, on retreat, you know, and having elections at the same time, you know. So, you know, a presidential candidate from a party that's in retreat cannot win an election. Well, that's why Blinken wants to, quote, freeze the conflict. Just uh, stop where we are now. But Russia's not going to do it unless, no. unless some kind of deal is worked out. Oh, yeah, Behind yeah. the scenes, a real deal that they're going to be held to. Yeah. Russia will say, no, we're going to finish this off right now and end this war on our terms. Yeah. So yeah. you're right. Yeah. They're losing and they're leaving power. It's not yeah. a good nation. Yeah. And this is right after the Afghanistan uh, debacle, you know, their full retreat in Afghanistan that they've never full accounted retreat. for yet. Yeah. Full retreat, just ran out and left everything. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I want everybody to know around the world that Biden, I think, I think is gone. Maybe I'm wrong. But again, you can't have an analysis that doesn't look at the political operations of the opposition party. Too much of analysis is based on this and this and this based on something somebody wrote. But you have to look at concrete analysis of concrete conditions. Mm -hmm. And Biden is under attack on many levels. And inflation is eating people alive in the United States. Gas mm -hmm. keeps going up. Food prices keep going up. Nothing is going down. People can't save any money. Mm -hmm. So they're not really inclined to vote for him. Hmm. They'll vote for him because he's a Democrat, but there's no love for what he's done. He's, he's done nothing but send money to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Incredible that's it. money. And that's going to feed inflation for many more years. For many more years. The sanctions have backfired. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a total failure. Yeah. And I think the impeachment, if it gets off the ground, and his deteriorating mental health, plus the COVID, the COVID is COVID's on the rise again. Yeah, it's still ongoing. Yeah. Right. His wife has COVID, which means he probably has COVID. Whoa. Whoa. This is, wow, this is imminent then. Yes. I think it's imminent, but I could be wrong. Uh -huh. But I'm just saying there's another way of looking at things in the United States that I had to reject. That's all. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's more going on than you think. And, and the war, his health, um, the economy, and the hearings on impeachment don't help him. That doesn't help him at all. I'm not saying Trump's going to win, because in my view, Trump may have a heart attack and die. Trump has four trials. Trump is in his 70s, too. He's never had four trials in his life. That's a lot of fucking stress, man. Mm-hmm. And then the son yeah, as well, you know, is okay. under pressure. His son is yeah. going to be under exam, you know, after, if Ukraine loses the war, you know, then the question arises, you know, like, what happened to all the money that was used to in the war? Yeah, well, you know, let's look like this, uh, Abraham. You crash, Ukraine is losing the war. It's not going to win the war. Yeah. It doesn't have enough men. Yeah. It's, I mean, they've killed between 70,000 and how many hundred thousand men? Yeah. Killed. Yeah. Dead, yeah. The I mean the, the the they they can't make they can't make their own ammunition. Yeah. I mean they're gonna they're gonna achieve a military victory or two like in any war. Yeah. You're 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 gonna outsmart your opponent and hit hit your opponent in a weak spot. Any war does that, okay? But they cannot win the war. Yeah, yeah. If Russia won a war, they would just destroy Ukraine, and they they decide not to do that. They could bomb the hell out of Kiev. They yeah. could just knock everything. I guess they could. They get to all, do everything at it and just knock it out if they really wanted to, but they didn't want that kind of war. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I think Biden's and the in Biden's days are numbered, and the Democrats better hope their days aren't numbered. Uh -huh. The Democrats better hope that because this presidency has sucked. Uh. No one's got nothing for it. 